Time to rally the troops. Yeah. How you doing there, Kyle? Hey guys, Field Marshal here. Uh, gonna do an E11 aluminum build today. And I've got a lot of questions, a lot of people asking about, you know, what's the difference between this and the Denix and my steel Mauser. Well, this is nothing like the Denix because it's incorrect as hell, uh, but it is the same as my steel. Now the difference is I pre, um, uh, they're anodized, they're actually, you know, rotoed and anodized, so they're pre-black. The steel one, you actually blue like you would do the real Mauser. So if you're doing a Han Solo deal of 44 build, you like one of the live fires, you know, it looks just like the real thing. Uh, this is kind of a, a little help, a little cheater, you know, for the, for different builders, you know, so it's already uh, pre-blacked. So um, I'll go over each individual piece as we as we go through the assemblies here. Let me go over a few things that are different from the steel build when you buy it because that's more of a pro build, more of a higher end build. It's, it's separate. It requires bluing. This does not. Uh, this also comes with the wood grips that are already stained, ready to go. Um, all the parts are, are, are kind of prepped, so, you know, it'd be black. You know, basically you could go, you know, wear it in a holster at a cosplay, you know, just right out of, the, right out of buying one on the site there. You got a choice between uh, two of the breeches. Um, a lot of you don't realize this, but you know if you're if you're doing like a, the best spinner or most of the builds, you know the, the regular barrel's fine. You know the flash hider slip over it. You know it requires a long barrel. The um, when you get the the hero build from a new hope, you need to get make sure you get this one. You know because this stuff fits a little differently than than it does on the on the standard barrel. You know, on the real, on the real uh, hero build, you know, they had a an actual piece that was on there and, and had it cut probably. So, um, okay, well, we'll get started. I guess we ought to do the breach first. Uh, it's it's the simplest when you when you when you get these things. I try to send out a little poster, and this is also on the website. Uh, now, when you buy them on the site, this is actually pre-assembled, but I do have the kits available too for you know guys that want to start from scratch. So. I'll start off with, with this area here with part 24, which is the breech insert, and 33, which is the mainspring catch plate, and then 32, which is the upper end cap. Uh, we also have to put the bolt stop in too, so we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do it on the full size one here. Um, got to put this guy in. We got to put this guy in first. Okay, get this to line up. It's holes in that side of it correspond with these little guys right here. Slide that in. Now the fun part. These teeny weeny little pins here. You know, they want to drop all the way through because when you slide that back piece in, that is going to keep it in place. Keep them from falling out. There we go. They're all the way down in there. Now, up and do this again here. Okay. Now, when this slides all the way to the back now, this covers those two little holes up and that can't fall out, the pins can't fall out. Put this back in there. And then, our 3D printed piece here, which it is part 24, which is the breech insert. Little room there. There it goes. Okay. Springs rolling everywhere. Okay. There we go, we got our upper breech assembly. 
that I didn't put the spring in. So I'll pop that in now. There we go. Now, toward the end, there, there's the little extractor piece here. Um, that is part 15, which is extractor. Uh, I heat blue these so they'll look like the real one. And uh, you'll see that if you get the complete bill, but I'm not, that actually glues in there. I'm not gonna glue that in right now. That'll fall out. Um, okay. Now we'll talk about, now this is one I've already put together, the uppers here. I'm gonna show you how this comes apart. Then I'll show you how to put the, the whole assembly together. The latch in the back, just like on the real Mauser, you have to have the hammer all the way back. It, it allows clearance for this latch. And then this piece pops out, okay? And you got the whole trigger group. We'll just set that guy right there. And just like that. Okay. Uh, I guess we ought to do the trigger. Trigger next here. Trigger, you got two pieces, got a little dowel you gotta put in. You got this piece. You gotta you gotta drop it center line. And then there's a slot. I don't know if you can see this here. There's a slot down there where that dowel goes. You got to tip the trigger forward so the lip goes up underneath. And the, down here, that little lip will come underneath. And then you're able to push that dowel down in the groove there. And there you've got the trigger where it's functioning. The trigger group will actually put pressure on it so that it has tension, okay? Let me set that piece aside for a second. Okay. I guess we ought to put this guy the sight together next here. Because it's going to slip under this little um, um, undercut slot that's in the, in the top of the breech here, top of the upper. It's just like on the real Mauser. They fix these things to where you, you, don't, have to, you don't have to have any tools to take it apart. And uh, we, we copy, got lucky and copy that part of it. So first thing is you got these two tiny, tiny little, little springs. The first one goes right here. There's a little hole for it. And there we go. Oh. Dropping everything today. There we go. Stay in there. Fight me. There it is. It's only this hard when you're trying to do something on camera. Oh, got a little piece of debris in there. Yeah, there we go. There it went. It had a little piece of debris in there. Okay, take the other part. You gotta line the two dovetails up for the forward and back part of it. I know this is hard to see. This is such tiny, tiny pieces. There we go. So get that in there and it's spring loaded. Okay. Next, we want to slide it onto the sight rail here. Notice it's got the little little grooves here that correspond with the little notch that's on this side, that's opposite of the push button. So you want those on that side. And you just stick this guy through there. There we go. Locked in place. Okay. Now, a little spring here. A little hole in the bottom and this is a little bit tricky because you've got to slide it in there so do it upside down so the spring don't fall out we're gonna we're gonna set it on top of there and then these these little notches these little uh, little pins are sticking out they're actually gonna go into the under, underneath and line up with the holes on the side here so let me get it trapped and I'll flip it over okay See that? And then slide it forward. Spring pushes it up so the dowels are in position. Just like on the real Mauser. Okay. Let's see here. 
Next, before we go any further, we got the trigger in here. Now we need to put the, the mag plate on and the pin. First thing is, uh, well, we've got three parts, four parts here. We've got a spring, we've got the little uh, set screw, and we've got the little follower pin here. That is part number 22, magazine door pin. That goes first. Drop that in. Next goes the spring. Okay. And that'll stay there. I need to get an Allen wrench. This is a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. And secure that. Okay. Trying to hold the trigger in, it'll fall out if I don't hold it too. Okay. Put a little cap here. Okay. But what it does is it actually locks underneath a little groove under here, under this lip. Oh, there it went. The pin just pops in that little hole and secures it, just like on the real one. Okay. Might be going a little fast, but this is just kind of a down and dirty video, so stay with me, stay with me. Okay, next, we're ready for, we're ready to do the trigger group now, the, the hammer and everything. So these two pieces, they'll slide together. There's a rail here and a, and a, and a dovetail here. Slide those together, okay? Nothing to it. Now let's put this together. First thing is, Let's put the hammer in. There's a dowel here that holds that so it pivots, drops in the hole there. Okay. Next piece is this is the this is the guy that locks it and keeps everything from flying it out the back here, and that is the lock frame stop. And you put it in this way. This this the piece right here is actually going to catch. I know it's hard to see, but so we'll, we'll put that in. That slides in and the spring goes under it. Put the dowel in there. Okay. Now if any of these dowels, if you're like assembling anything, if anything doesn't go together, don't force it. You know, tapping on something with a you know, hammer is one thing, but forcing it, you can destroy stuff. So. You know, all these things kind of press in. If you have to, use the back of a hammer, tap stuff down, make sure it's in. Uh, next is the little spring. And there's a little notch right here that this thing, just squeeze it together and slide it in place. Use a little screwdriver to get it over that notch there. That way it'll stay. There we go. Can you see that? That pivots, okay. Safety, which is, it's non-functional. Oops, there we go, the dial fell out of our hammer there. I'll hold that in place. This is a safety, which is non-functional. Um, it does move, but if you, there's a couple electronic kits out there, uh, you know, which I've got some wireway holes cut. There's also two little dials here. And I make a little micro switch kit that you can get because the micro switches the electronics guys are going to give you are going to be way too big. These things are these are super tiny. Use two little dials you put it there, and this will actually work as the on off. Okay, which is really cool. It's a super small little micro switch. Also on the other side, I have another one here where you can put another switch. So when we do our when we do the sear, now this is a, you got to turn, a little tricky here. You got to turn it upside down. Spring goes in the bottom and kind of put this on sideways. There's a, there's a, a little um, a boss right here and a hole on this. Put it here and kind of trap that all in one motion. It's going to, it's not just like that one. It's going to want to push it off to the side. When you get it in the blaster, it'll hold it in place. But that spring, push it over a little bit, make sure it's kind of lined up will help. But that is what stops the, the hammer. That's what the trigger is going to be pushing up on. So hold on to that. 
Uh, the two little holes here for the other micro switch, which the little lever there. So that actually, when you pull the trigger, will actually, you know, if you've got electronics, that'll actually make things happen there. Next, dowel follower and this spring. And that's what puts tension on the hammer. Yeah, that whole assembly is good. We'll have to put this back on here. And what we're trying to do is this, this spring is actually going to be pushing on part number 33. This little, little boss thing that sticks down here is at an angle. So you just kind of slide that in there. Spring hits that, push it in place. Make sure the hammer's all the way back. I'll do this where y'all can see it and this is a new one latch that in place now that'll only latch down if this hammer's all the way back and and it's tight it's meant to hold it in there pretty pretty secure it's almost line to line so once that's happened there you go and that one's really snappy i like that one more thing on the bolt here you got a little screw that I found that uh, little flathead screw, uh, I mean a little um, um, slot head screw. It looks almost just like the real sear that's on the on the Mauser. So just screw that guy in there. It really doesn't do anything. It's just for looks, but it's really really a good match. So there you go. Last but not least, the grips uh, on this on this build they do they do come uh, pre pre stained so you don't have to do anything and you got your little brass inserts now wood will expand and contract and if any of you guys have noticed uh, if they get tight you know you've got to be careful you can, you know tap them in don't don't use the metal part but you can tap them in place uh, once you put them on you know they'll actually cinch together you won't have to worry about them coming back out so Well, there you have it. It's ready to become a Luke Bespin, Han Bespin, a Dagobah, anything you want it to. Hey, thanks guys for following. All of these blasters are on blasterfactory.com, all the variations from you know the original trilogy. And uh, if you've got any questions, you know, or if you need help with any of the builds, email us, you know, at blasterfactory.com. Uh, this is Field Marshal, and I'll see you next time.